on, fill me on, fill me till I want no more, so that I can fill the nations with your love. Fill me on, fill me till I want no more. So that I can feed the nations with your love. I bless your name. I give you all the glory, Lord. And come feel the hungry and the thirsty, we pray. Come restore us, Holy Father. Revive us again. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and of grace, thou art welcome in this place. For in thy presence, that's healing divine. No other power can heal us but thine. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and Lord of grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and of grace, for thou art welcome in this place. Lord, thou art welcome. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A quick one today. A quick one today. 2 Kings 2, verse 19. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse number 19, like they say. Verse number 19. And the man of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth. But the water is not, and the ground is barren. The city is pleasant. Exterior, the surroundings, the flowers, the trees, the neighborhood, the plantations. But the ground. But the ground. I, I see, you see. 
you see, I can, I, I, I can take prayers on these for, for five, five days. The city is pleasant. When you see it, you are attracted. But you get close. There is no water. Water is life. Water is life. When you lack water, there's, I mean, there's nothing else. The city is pleasant. The situation is pleasant. But the water is not. The ground is barren. This was a full, typical example of the spirit of controversy. The city is pleasant. There is no water. The situation is pleasant. As my Lord said, you can see with your eyes. But the ground. <laughs> We're going to pray against the spirit of controversy. Have you studied your Bible in Acts chapter 3 verse 1? Now there was a man who was by the gate of beautiful who was lame from birth. This man was by a gate called beautiful. And his life was not beautiful. A man was positioned by a gate. Bring up verse 2. By a gate called beautiful. And his life was not beautiful. Contradiction. Controversy. In Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 1, he said, When there be a controversy between two men and they come to thee in judgment, thou shalt justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. Because the wicked initiates controversy. In Isaiah chapter 34 verse 8, he said, This is the year of the Lord's recompense for the controversy of Zion. God wants to reward you for all the controversies you have experienced in your life. Contradiction. The, the city is pleasant. But there is no water. The young lady is beautiful. But by reason of her character, no man can stay with her. This man is a graduate. He has a good result. He left to the first class upper. But, mm -mm, there's a force fighting from getting a job. Character sound, but can't get married. Lived in America, in London, Europe, all their life. Clean record, no record of crime. Never been pulled over by the police as much as driving, um, having a driving fault or something. No, no points on your license. You are, you are that prim and proper. But till now, no tangible job. The situation is a spirit of controversy. You can't be carrying Bible. And be carrying sickness. It's controversy. You can't be carrying the word of God. And be carrying the rot of Satan. The situation of this city. As thou see it. Everyone can see. There are some of you hearing the sound of my voice. You can't tell people what you are going through. Because they will tell you. You are, you are, trying, to, you are trying to disguise. You are, you are trying to be pretentious. But that's what you are going through. It was man that came to Elisha. Not one person. So it was an observation. A general observation. People come to the city, they're like, wow, it looks like a tourist site. By the time you stay a day, you get tested. You say, no, no, I'm leaving this place. That thing that makes people walk out of your life so easily is controversy. People come down, they sit in the city, and after about a day, they say, no water in this city. What? With all these plantations? No, 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 no. I can't stay here. I'm walking away. That thing that makes people always walk out of your life despite your good intention. Despite your good intents and purposes, that thing that makes people always walk out of your life, please be real and be sincere. You know it is happening to you. It's a spirit of controversy. Stop blaming everybody who is walking out. Everyone cannot be wrong. What have you done wrong? It's a spirit of controversy. You've got to address it. God is talking to you. The man of the city said unto Elisha, I mean, you see, people—they're just—they're just existing. Not everybody walking on the face of the or, 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 walking on the face of the earth is alive. Some people are just existing. There's nothing they can be identified to positively. Okay, let me give you an instance. In Second Samuel chapter fourteen, I believe verse twenty-seven, the Bible says Absalom had three sons. There were three sons born to Absalom. 
And Absalom, and unto Absalom, we are born three sons and one daughter, whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of fair countenance. But no, go back to 27. It's okay. That's what I want. Absalom had three sons. Please, let that register in your mind. Absalom had three sons. Keep that stock. Okay? Now move to 2 Samuel 18, 18. Now you're going to see something that will surprise you. And Absalom, in his lifetime, had taken and reared up for himself a pillar, which is the king's dial. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name. And it is called Absalom Place. Absalom, go back to 2 Samuel 14, 27. This is Bible study. Absalom, to Absalom was born three sons. Three sons. Go back to 2 Samuel 18, 18. And Absalom in his lifetime reared up for himself a pillar which is the king's dad for he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. How do you, how do you juxtapose or explain that? Absalom biologically had sons. But he had no son to keep his name. Those are two different things. He wasn't saying, I don't have sons, but all the sons I, he had, we are useless. They we are useless. In fact, the Bible tells us how useless they were. That is why their name was not even mentioned in verse 27 of 2 Samuel 14. It was the girl's name that was mentioned and uh, 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 exter uh, external features described. A structure described. Whose name was Taman? She was a woman of fair countenance. Look at the three sons. That they just grouped them and just summarized them. Absalom had to raise up a pillar, built a pillar, and called it Absalom's place. Meaning that the pillar was of more relevance than the sons. An inanimate object constructed by a man was more relevant than a biological, you know, a biological uh, uh, product of a person. A pillar. He said, I don't have a son to answer my name. Please, pillar, answer my name. These ones, a pillar will not answer your name. Amen. A pillar will not answer your name. Amen. Controversy, the spirit of controversy. Absalom had three sons, but they were useless. Of course, they'll be useless because Absalom messed up his father. The thing about life people do not understand is that life is a seed. Life is a seed. Be very careful the things you do. Time flies. Whatever you do today, two, three years is like tomorrow. Time flies. Be careful. There is nothing that is done in isolation. You don't turn back on the father. One of the things that has helped my life is because I understand the mystery of principles. I understand principles. It has, it's a pillar. I don't break principles. Sometimes when I go through certain battles in life, I ask the Lord, why are you always standing by me? He said, because there are principles you know and you go out of your way to keep them. He said, those are the principles that are speaking for you. Now, you must understand something very clearly. I really wish somebody is getting this revelation. I really wish you see, I, wish, I, wish, I really wish you are getting this revelation. Hey, la ba la ba samandra hati ke basa. The situation of this city. There's a situation in this city. It's pleasant, as my Lord can see. But there's no water. There's no water. There's no water. Ayala Manakasa, brothers. There's no water. The spirit of contradiction and controversy is that spirit of false hope. You may not understand. You, see, you have to be very careful. The men of the city observed. You have to be very careful. People are observing you. There are people watching your life. They are waiting to see the outcome of it. You know, man of God, that we are from this city. So let's give you an information. You're coming here now. You're happy. You're coming here now. You're okay. But please let me tell you something. <laughs> there is no water here. And nobody under the face of the earth can live without water. 
Just the way somebody walks into your life, walks into your organization, they can't stay when there is no peace. Just the way somebody walks into your business, they can't stay when you are not honest or not fair to them. They are going to pray right now. They are going to pray loud and clear. Every part of controversy, contradiction, break from my life. Amen. Amen. That spirit of controversy. Please, and city, why would there not be water? Controversy, contradiction. With all the contacts you have, all the people you know, on your phone, you've got contacts on your phone, you've got, you know people, but no one remembers you. Don't blame them. I've said this over time. Don't blame them. Most times our problem is not our helper, it's our altar. Most times our problem is not our alt helper, it's our altar. And how do you handle the altar? Through what you utter and what you offer. How do you handle your altar? Through what you offer. Offer. And what you alter. And that triggers help from your helper. We're going to lift up our voice. Every spirit. Every power of controversy. The way I wrote it down, we're going to repeat it. Every power of controversy, co contradiction, break from my life. Amen. Break from my life. Amen. Break from my life. Amen. Amen. We're going to take this scripture. Maybe we'll take it today. We'll take two prayers today. Two prayers. Maybe there's another prayer for tomorrow. We'll take two prayers again after tomorrow, a day after tomorrow. Still on this. We're going to pray right now. Every power of controversy, contradiction, break from my life. Lift your right hand and say, My father, my father. My my father, father, my father. Shout it loud and clear. My my father, father, my father. Father. I can't hear you well. My my father, father, my father. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray, every power of controversy, contradiction, break from my life. Break from my life. Break from my life. Break from my life. Open your mouth and fire prayers. My Lord, my Lord, my Savior, my
Jesus name. The man of this city said unto Elisha, the city is pleasant as the my Lord see it. That's the spirit of explanation. Your life is supposed to be an exclamation, not explanation. Situations that always make you explain. The Bible says for the endless expectation, waiting for the manifestation, not the explanation. Lord, move me from explanation to exclamation. Amen. Move me from explanation to exclamation. Amen. Type that right now on your handle. I move from explanation to exclamation. Amen. Exclamation is a sudden shout, a sudden scream, a sudden surprise. When people see you, it should be, wow. It shouldn't be you are trying to explain. That the next time people shall see you, they will exclaim. Amen. The next time people shall see you, they will exclaim. Amen. I move from explanation to exclamation. Amen. I move from explanation to exclamation. Amen. 
My Lord, Elijah was just entering. He had not asked a question. They are trying to explain. Most times, explanations are a defense for failure. Explanations are a defense for failure. Explanation, I subtle defense for failure. They will exclaim, you will not explain. I move, type it on your handle. I move from explanation to explanation. Hashtag wonders without number. I move from explanation to explanation. So when God does something in your life after now, and people say, wow, say yes, I just move from explanation to exclamation. You are surprised. That the very places they never thought you would enter, you will not just enter, you occupy there. Yeah. I'm telling you, lives have been changed. Wonders without number is a revival. I'm telling you, what, I'm, what I see and hear, mind-blowing people have been taken from the miry clay, their feet set on the rock to stay. I move from explanation to exclamation. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 3, 11, I will do a work in your day, a thing in Israel. That the both ears of them that hear it shall tingle. That is exclamation. 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 I move from explanation to exclamation. Yeah, my father, my father. My my father, father, my father, father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I begin to pray. I, I, move. I, move. I 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 move. From explanation. From exclamation. To exclamation. To exclamation. Open your mouth and fire prayers. I Connect your faith to my faith. I connect. I speak a blessing upon your life. Amen. Connect your faith to my faith. I connect. Every controversy and contradiction in your life ends today. Amen. I see a family of three girls. A family of three girls. Among the three of them, one of you are called Mary. And there is a word that was spoken by an uncle over your father like a curse on the three of you about marriage. And you made good, you made good suitors, but you, you have not been able to settle down because of this word. 
People are now worried and bothered for you because of your character, how sound and nice you are. It's like a controversy. I decree. And every word spoken, militating against your marital settlement, I reverse it. Amen. Amen. Settle in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm seeing a young man from a family of seven. None of you can build a house. None. You have money. But anytime you lay a foundation that you fall sick, something happens, you have to sell that whole plot with the foundation. It happened to you, happened to you, two of your brothers. In fact, one of them actually almost died. Now he has a stroke. Nobody can build. I decree that that embargo is here by lift Amen. Amen. Somebody by the name of Sarah. They are going through a big time depression. Depression right now because of the controversies in your life. The Lord said to tell you that dry bones will rise again. Amen. Amen. Osita is in me. Hear the word of the Lord to you. Closed doors are open. Amen. Amen. Closed doors are open. Amen. Amen. By the voice of the Lord. The Lord is showing me that right now what he's doing, that over a thousand three hundred people.